You guys got one of these Briggs and Stratton's doing this? And it won't turn. All right, guys, we're finally back. I got another one. Um, it's going to be another compression release. I got a ton and ton of hits on my last video I did for this. I really appreciate it, guys, by the way. Um, what I did is I bought a Chinese cam for 25 bucks. Instead of putting the cam in there, I used the OEM cam, and I just swapped the compression release onto that cam. So I didn't really go into detail on how I swapped it, but this time I'm going to go into detail for you. So then you, it'll clear a lot of things up for a lot of people. And uh, so let's get started on it. Uh, I got to get the fuel line off first. Got to get the throttle cable off right here, 5 16 And then I'll take you to the other side and I'll get the pulley off. I'll probably just do the pulley off camera. There's tons of videos out there, guys. If, if you really need to know how that bad, I can let you know how. But I want to get this rolling. I got the compression release coming in the mail tomorrow. And uh, I want to get this thing out of my garage. On this side of the motor here, you're going to need to undo your um, wire to your starter, your positive. Undo this clip for your wiring harness. Just pulls apart. I uh, believe you can leave the rest of it on the block. You sure can. We got to get this off. Then you got stars. I think they're like T45, something like that, uh, for your exhaust pipe. We got to get those off and we got to drain the oil out. Uh, I may drain the oil out actually after I get this motor off because this is a real stupid design on how to drain this thing. Some idiot engineered it, uh, which is typical. Like I said, I'm just going to go over this real quick to get this motor off. It's going to be a 5 8 bolt to get your pulley off. Hopefully it just drops down for me. Uh, and then you're going to have four uh, motor mount bolts. I'll let you know what size they are when I get them loose. And that's it. As soon as you get the pulley off, slide the belts off, the motor is going to be off. Then we can get to business. Okay, now that that's off, what a nightmare that was. You're going to get the four bolts that hold the motor on. They're 9 16 You'll see them up underneath the bottom. Self-explanatory. And then you can lift the motor off. Now we'll take and lift the motor off. I'll drain the oil after I get the motor on the bench. Just like that. Now you can see why I waited to drain the oil, so I can just tip it on its side. Because, uh, let me tell you, the drain on this thing sucks. It needs uh, an extension on it. You can buy them. It's just an NPT. I think it's like quarter inch or three eighths. I can't remember. It's been a long time since I made one. But you could just put a little extended nipple on there with a cap on the end. I'm not buying one for this machine. Okay, I have this little wood stand that's eons old, it's probably from the 60s to 70s. My great grandfather built it for himself when he used to do engines. You could either lay the crank like this if you need to work on the top side. When we used to do uh, rebuilds as a kid, you don't even rebuild this stuff no more. You throw it out. But I like it so I can lay the dipstick in there. Just got to be careful you don't bend up that screen on the top of the motor or on the top of the, the flywheel there. You don't want to tear that all up or bust the plastic up, but you're not going to really be doing any hammering or anything. This is it. You got to crack all these bolts loose. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's nine or ten of them on here. I'll tell you what size they are when we crack them loose. These are going to be half inch. That holds your sump on. That's what this bottom pan is called. So, I moved the motor on my lift table. Here's all your bolts. One, always check your lengths. Make sure they're all the same length. If they're not, make sure you mark where the shorter ones go. Or remember where they go. So here you have it. There's two, four, six, eight. There's ten. I used my little... Um, the shop vac now you're just going to take gently and tap on the case there you go the case will come off the sump and you can see that's really dirty we'll get that cleaned up nice for the guy um, we'll put that over there and here's your cam Show you how you get the governor gear out. Lift your governor gear out just like this. I got a pretty decently clean newer rag. Okay, and then now 
I know in my other video I told you this, I'm gonna tell you this again. You got your timing marks, one on your crank, you gotta find it, I believe it's right here. And this timing mark here, there'll be a dot on your cam. So when you rotate this motor, I gotta take the plug out, hold on. Now it's gonna be very difficult to see, but when you rotate this motor, you'll see there's a little dot here and there's a little dot right there on your crank. So I always like to rotate it that way when I put it back together, we're lined up. So I did have to just set the pulley on, no big deal. I wire wheeled this shaft, I cleaned the inside of here, so it slides on, nice. Now, you're just going to lift up on your cam, just like this, just lift up on it and your cam will lift off. And there you go. I don't know what's going on with this compression release. But it's damn sure not working. So I'm going to show you guys what we're going to do in this video. We're not going to uh, change any of the uh, uh, lifters or anything like that. All we're going to simply do is we're going to swap the, the compression release on this with a Chinese one. But use the OEM cam. Make sure you take your time and scrape all the old gasket off and get the surface really, really clean. Same thing on this side. It's gonna take a while. I'm just gonna do it off camera. I more or less wanna show you guys how to swap that compression release. But uh, you're gonna have to use a flat, flat scraper or whatever you can, little razor blade, but you gotta get all this gasket off. Take some time. Okay, we got our cam nice and cleaned off. Did some ultrasonic cleaning, a little washing. Sump's nice and clean, yeah, it's a little wet in the inside, we'll let it dry. Just took some engine bright. You see I got my gasket surface pretty damn clean. Used a flat razor blade, it took a while, block looks the same way. We're also going to be replacing this uh, crank seal. So I just have a seal pour, you could use a flathead, whatever you need to use. And just pry up on it like this, boom. And I have a seal driver kit that will drive the new one in. We'll get some paper towel, we'll wipe this out. And when the uh, blue truck gets here that takes all my money, that blue or purple truck with our chinese camshaft, we're just going to swipe that uh, compression release off of it. And we'll be turning and burning and putting this thing back together. So I'll see you when Amazon gets here. Okay, this is what you're going to do. You're going to go on Amazon, give me the part number, or eBay. Look at that. Made in China. Junk, but what we're doing will work fine. I just did one, and it's been going good for a year. It's going to be a 793880. Comes with the oil seal and the gasket. I'll double check uh, the part number on the Briggs. And show you when we get her cracked open. we got to drive this seal in first. Comes with a new seal. Drive the seal down in her. You can see i got a seal installation tool here. You don't have to have that. There's other things you could use. You'll be able to see where the other seal is sitting. Actually, there is a little lip in there. You can drive it all the way down. You'll feel her stop. You'll see. Be able to look in there. Now you got her in there good. They do give you one for the top side if you do have the flywheel off this machine. Okay, let's get this out of the way and let's get in for what you're watching the video for. I know guys, I, I hate buying Chinese stuff. I just want to mention that, but for somebody to buy a hundred and some dollar camshaft and pay the labor to have it put in on an older machine like this, it's just not worth it. So, and the reason you don't want to use these Chinese cams I never personally put one in, but if you use this, these lobes will wind up stripping out. Yeah, you probably could TIG weld it. I was going to do that before. It's funny, the number is the same on the gear, 579. It's the same damn gear. The uh, the shaft is a little different on this one on the end. It's made to have an oil pump. I think it's, it's universal. So anyway, who cares about all that? Let me get down into detail on this on how we switch it. First things first, take a look. These are these look a little different. 
It's all right. It works. I've done this before. You can see there's a little difference. Now, on the new one, take your flathead, start pushing it down. Go easy with it. Don't break it because it has plastic in there. Might have to get a bigger flathead. It's a lot stronger in the new plastic. Just really hope you guys can see. I'm trying to do the best I can. I got a lot of questions on this. Now what you might have to do is take a pair of pliers or a bigger flathead. Let me get one or the other. You're going to need a pretty thick flathead. Keep pushing it back off your new cam. Boy, this one's really in there. Uh, just keep working it. Use the thicker part of the screwdriver, whatever you have to do. You'll feel, you'll feel her when she pops out. I was going to put pliers on this. I don't want to tear up the end. So like I said, just keep, just keep working at her a little bit. Might even have to get something a little bit thicker in there. Just kind of work her back and forth. You'll see her come out. It's got little teeth in here. Damn, this one's really on there. Last one I had popped out with ease. This one ain't so easy. Nope, still fighting me. Let's keep pushing it out. <clears throat> there you go. Just like that. We're going to wind up having to use pliers on the end of this. We're going to have to be very careful we don't tear that up. Okay, got some pliers. There you go. Now it's out. You see your spring. You guys can see how it's going to lay in there. You're just going to take it right off this cam. Alright guys, being that this new pin is just a hair bigger than the old pin, <laughs> I got something. I don't know. So I got a drill bit that fits nice and good into the new cam. Shits and giggles. We're going to take the old cam. I know this should be done on a bridge port. We're just going to put a drill bit in there. We're just going to ream the hole. Just a hair. Let me get the bit tight. This is hardened steel too, so... But since we're just punching it out just a hair, this might work. We'll put the compression release on once I get it blown out. All right, I know the haters are going to hate. That's all right. So, like I said on the last one I did, this pin was the exact same size. Boom, you just push it out like I showed you guys and put it in. This one's a little bit bigger. So, what we're going to do on this one, take your spring, put your spring over the top, like so. Line up your pin. And push your new one in that newly drilled hole. Now let me tell you something. Normally, yes, you'd want to do this on a bridge port. Absolutely. But, let me say this. I think since we just reamed that hole out just a hair, I had the perfect size drill bit. And that's hardened steel. To be drilling on an angle, it'd be pretty damn hard. So I think since all we had to do was just open it up a little bit. I'm pretty sure guys this is gonna work so somebody has to try it right to be able to put it on YouTube and be able to show if it works or not well I'm that guy so now you're gonna push your pin in you're probably gonna need to take a hammer make sure you got that flat spot lined up right there and I'll just gently tap it in you'll see her going in Let's see how tall it's standing up. If you ask me, I think it'll work just fine. Let's put it in the machine. Let's give it a try. Okay, on your block, like I told you earlier, you're going to line up your timing marks with your cam. Timing mark on your crank with your cam gear. You can see them off. Right there. You're going to have to push it in. Right there, you see the two marks. Your governor just sets right in there you'll see it'll push you can open and close it 
and you want to lay that spider gear or that gear down in there just like that so it rests in there just like that okay put the gasket on I gotta add something to this video I forgot make sure you pull your valve cover I forgot to show you guys so your rocker arms don't or your push rods don't drop off your rocker arms oops that was something very important you need to do because it just takes just a hair of movement when you get that cam out and these will fall off they're easy to put back on make sure your little buttons are on back there I need to add that in there the gasket Amazon sent us is pretty wrinkled up for being on the box but that's okay Mr. SRX can handle that we'll just make sure it lays flat when we get the case down you'll be able to watch it as you start to set the case down and make sure it stays in those pins might have to rotate the crank just a hair to get the case cover to fall into place Oh, that's the new crank seal I'm getting caught up on. So we'll just tap the cover down. Just like that. Make sure the gasket flattens out. There you go. Put the bolts back in and torque them. Torque spec on these is 18 foot pounds. Crisscross pattern. I already got them all torqued. You can see. So now put the motor on the way you took it off. And we'll see if it runs. Make sure you guys top the Earl off after you do this. Don't forget to put Earl in her.